Well, if you'll open your Bibles to uh, John chapter 10, and uh, we're going to be looking at these verses 7 uh, through 9 today uh, as we think about uh, this subject, the door is open. The door is open. That's the subject that I want us to think about today. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this phrase or not. I'm sure probably that uh, you have. It's probably an old phrase. I don't, it's, it's been a while really since I uh, heard this phrase. Uh, but have you, ever, have you ever knocked on somebody's door and they, they didn't come to the door? They didn't open the door. They just said, it's open. You ever, you ever done that? I've knocked on a lot of doors in my, uh, in my days as being a, a preacher. I visit every week. I don't, I, wouldn't, I don't visit every day, but I visit several days of every week. Uh, I knock on a lot of doors. And I, I, there were some doors, uh, they've gone on to be the, in glory now, that I'd visit in Greenville all along, out in the country, be this, you know, the, just a screen door would be there, and all the other doors open. They just, a lot of times they just say, Come on in, preacher. That's what they'd say. I don't know how they knew it was me. Maybe it was a walk, walk I did when I walked up on the porch or something, but, uh, but they do that. Well, Jesus pretty much lets us know, and we're going to see that today in this passage of Scripture, that the door is open. And uh, that's, that's the focus that I want us to see today. Uh, we, uh, you know, it, it always amazes me anytime I study the life of, of, of the Lord Jesus, what a tremendous teacher he really was. Uh, you know the Sermon on the Mount, tremendous uh, message uh, that, that he brought to the disciples and others that were gathered around. But if you really uh, just look at that sermon that Jesus preached in other places where he taught parables and, and, and he taught the people, he was an amazing teacher. And, and he always, in many cases, would use various images. He might take like, a, like an earthly image and what Jesus would do is he, he would take that earthly image, something that the people could get in their mind, and he would attach to it a divine meaning. And that's exactly what these seven statements that we are studying in the Gospel of John are all about. They're just, they're earthly objects, and Jesus takes that earthly object and he attaches to it a divine meaning does the same thing with the seven miracles that are recorded in the Gospel of John. If you're just looking at the miracle, the turning of the water into wine, if you're just looking at that miracle, you miss the point because there's a deeper point that Jesus has behind the miracle. And that's the same way with these statements that Jesus is making as he introduces himself to us and also to the world as to who he really is. Now in... Uh, John's gospel, we have already seen in chapter 6 in verse 48 that Jesus is the bread of life. So he takes, that, he takes that earthly image, bread, and he attaches a divine meaning to it. And what we learned was is as the bread of life, Jesus is our provision. He is the provision that we need that satisfies the hunger of the human heart. And then in, in uh, John uh, chapter 8 and verse 12, it says he is the light of the world. And he takes that earthly image and he attaches a divine meaning and message to it. As the light of the world, we discovered that Jesus is our pathway through this life. Today, John chapter 10, and in verse 9, Jesus makes this statement. He says, I am the door. I want you to listen to the, to the verse. Two times in these three verses, he says that. I am the door. Verse 7, he says, I'm the door. I'm the door of the sheep. And then in verse number 9, he says, I am the door. Listen to the statement. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. It is a beautiful image that Jesus lays out for us. He is the door. And here's what we're going to learn today. As the door, that simply means that Jesus is the passageway. 
He is the passageway into eternal life. That's an important thing to remember. As the light, he's the path. He shines light on the path and gives us direction. As the bread, he's provision. And our lives can be satisfied as we feed upon him and his truth. But as the door, he is the passageway into eternal life. Now I hope you listen really carefully because we're going to talk about salvation in a, in a lot of different aspects today that I think will be really helpful to you. And I hope God will just help you listen and, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit will help you as you apply this to your own life personally. You know, uh, doors are pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I don't, I don't know if you've ever uh, just stopped to think about uh, we go through doors every single day of our life and hardly give it a thought. In fact, do you, you ever think about how many doors you already have gone through this morning just to get to this service? You ever thought about that? Probably you, you, you went through a, a bedroom door, probably a bathroom door to get the bath and fix the face and you know get the whiskers off and all that kind of stuff and, and get ready to come to church. Some didn't do that, but that's all right. I'm not looking at Andy for any particular reason there. <laughs> You know, some people can take being called out. Amen? <laughs> but So you may have gone through a bathroom door. You, you, you may have uh, gone through a kitchen door and uh, a garage door or a back door or a porch door and then you went into the car door. And guess what? When you got here, you got out of the car door, you walked in what? The church door. And, and when this service is over, we're going to do that all over again. And so it's like every day we're, we're constantly going through doors. Now when Jesus said, I'm the door, uh, that, that's an image that, you know, might not be quite as clear to us as some of these other images like bread and light and those kinds of things, but, but here's what I want you to understand. Doors are really extremely important because doors carry you in to places and doors bring you out of places. They are, they are extremely important doors. Uh, this uh, a, f a few weeks ago, one morning I got this text from, from my oldest daughter in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And it was a picture of my oldest grandson. He had his backpack on his back and he was headed up the sidewalk into one of the first doors of his life he's headed to school. And then a little bit later on, I got a picture of him inside school. You know, still, we, 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 we're at the teacher's door then. But you know, that's a big door. Did you know it? That's a huge door. For a little kid, that's a huge door. Every one of us in this room have walked through that door. And for 12 years, you know, we got that education. And then there was another door we walked through. It may have been a door to go to college. It may have been a door uh, in, into a career or a job, but it was a door. And, and you know, those doors are extremely important because those doors determine relationships. They develop friendships and loyalties and all those kinds of things. They're, so doors are extremely important. Uh, Probably every one of us in this room, uh, or several of us, uh, most of us in this room have uh, walked through a church door or a house door or a place somewhere and walked down an aisle and said, I do, to the mate of our life. That, that, that's a significant door. It's a, it's a big door. Doors are important. Doors can represent change and challenge. I, I won't ever forget uh, when... Uh, Peggy and I left Milton, Florida, where I was pastor of Pine Terrace Baptist Church. She was to become the head of the math department at Milton High School, and we walked out of a door. And we walked into a door in Greenville, Alabama that we had no clue about, except we'd just been there one Sunday and preached one sermon and felt like God was calling us there. You talk about a door of challenge and change, that's a door of challenge. So, so I'm saying doors are important. And so when Jesus used this image, and he used the image, and we didn't read the verses, but in verses 1 down through verse number 7, Jesus talks about the door of the sheepfold. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about that in a few moments. But Jesus just simply sets up that doors are so important. You see, doors not only are about destination, but doors are about destiny. In fact, uh, you know, I, 
I, I thought about it this week. Actually, you know, we say, well, that, that's the front door in back there. Back there, you know, in the back. That's the front door in. But you know, a door, every door, every door is really an exit as well as an entrance. You ever thought about that? Every door is. Every single door. You know, you, if you're on the outside, well, you, you open it and what? You step in. If you're on the inside, you open it and you step out. So every door is like, it, it's like an entrance and an exit. And, and here's what God taught me about that this week. When it comes to Jesus being the door, that's the opportunity for people to exit a life of meaninglessness and purposelessness and enter a life of meaning and purpose. And so when Jesus stood up and said to the people then and to you and I even today, I am the door, what Jesus was saying is, is I offer you the opportunity to leave a life, to exit a life of, of no meaning and no purpose and no real direction, and I offer you the opportunity to enter a life that has full of, it's, it'll be full of meaning, it'll have purpose, there'll be peace and contentment in this life if you step in this door and you follow me. So the question is, what does that mean? What does it mean when Jesus said, I am the door? And I want to suggest to you out of verse number 9, we're just going to focus on that verse, I want to suggest to you three things that it means when Jesus said, I am the door. You notice the verse he said, uh, he said, I am the door if anyone enters by me. He will be saved and he's going to go in and out and find pasture. And that verse just sort of divides into three sections and I want you to notice three things that it means when it says Jesus is the door. Here, here's the first thing. I want you to see through this door, through the door of Jesus, through this door, number one, we have salvation. We have salvation. It's right there, isn't it? He said, I'm the door. If anyone enters by me, he'll what? He will be saved. So Jesus being the door means that we have salvation. So, so have you been saved today? Well, have you, have you come to Jesus is the issue. If you have come to Jesus, then you have salvation, and we'll talk about that. But if you haven't entered this door, if you're still on the outside looking in, then guess what? You're not saved. It's as simple as that. Salvation is all about following Jesus. And have you ever thought about what a promise this is right here? You notice this? If anyone enters by me, he what? He will be saved. Isn't that a great promise right there? There's no doubt about that. There's no question about that. It is he will be saved. If you enter in by Jesus, you will be saved. See, I, I, I know that as a 10-year-old boy, even as a 10-year-old boy, I didn't understand it all. I've learned so much more about it since then. I've come to understand just exactly what I did experience and what I did get when I got saved as a 10-year-old boy, but I know as a 10-year-old boy that I walked through that door of salvation and Jesus Christ saved me. It, the, the, the text says He will save you. It is a powerful verse. Now, you will notice as, as you read this passage, you look at verse 7, and I, I called your attention to this last week. In verse number 7 it says, Then Jesus said to them again, now who's the them again? It's those Pharisees and those scribes that have been following him. And, and, and that takes us back to the first part of chapter 10 here where Jesus said it in verse number 1, Most assuredly I say to you, he who doesn't enter the sheepfold by the door climbs up some other way is a thief and a robber. So you say, well, what's Jesus saying? Well, simply put, Jesus is saying there's only one door. You say, well, now that sounds a little exclusive. It is exclusive. Jesus doesn't keep anybody out, but look, folks, he is the door. And, and I didn't say that. Jesus said that. And, and you say, well, that doesn't sound, you know, that, that, just, that sounds not politically correct. You, you ever notice that Jesus, the majority of the time, was not politically correct? 
He was not politically correct with his government. He wasn't politically correct with the scribes and the Pharisees. In fact, you know, he, he was constantly rubbing them in the wrong direction. But he is the only door. He is the only way. In fact, he says, if anyone enter by what? By me. Jesus is the door. And if you enter by him, you'll be saved. Now the world may, uh, it may cast you out, it may, it may turn its back on you, but if, if, if you come to Jesus, he won't turn his back on you. In fact, I, I like chapter 9. It's one of my favorite chapters, John chapter 9. Let me just kind of highlight that chapter if you want to turn to it. Uh, I'll just point out a few verses of Scripture. But this is the chapter about the blind man that received his sight. And it's all connected to the story that we're dealing with about Jesus being the door. And in John chapter 9 verse 1 it says, Jesus passed by and he saw a man who was blind from birth. Now verse 2 says, the disciples asked him, say, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, you need to kind of highlight that in your, in your Bible somewhere. Just because somebody's got tough stuff going on in their life is no indication that they're out of the will of God. You know, I mean, I, I, I was at a funeral here recently. I wasn't doing it. I was just attending it. And I had a, it was a Christian guy standing there and he said something about so-and-so. said, I tell you what, I, I believe if I was him, I'd check up to see what's wrong in my life. as much stuff going on with him physically. And I said, you might ought to check up and read your Bible. He said, what? I said, you might ought to read your Bible. I said, I believe my Bible tells me about a man named Job that was as righteous as they get, more so than maybe me or you, that God even used him as a test to show Satan that he wouldn't backslide on him, and he had all kind of stuff happen in his life, and he was as righteous and straight as a gun barrel, and here you talking about somebody that's got difficulty going on in their life. M maybe you the one. <laughs> You know, sometimes I get bold every now and then. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need to be bold, amen? Sometimes you just need to speak your peace, you know? Sometimes you don't need to speak your peace, but sometimes you do. Well, here's another example of that right here. And here's a guy who's blind. What had he done? He hadn't done a thing in the world. But you notice that God said, but this blindness is going to be used for the glory of God. And, and then you notice that I don't have time to get into the text and I won't dig too deep into it. It's such a good preaching text. But verse number six said Jesus told him what to do, how to, you know, he, he took some, some uh, uh, clay and he spat on it and, and he anointed his eyes and told him to go wash them. Verse number seven said that, that, that he did that and, and when he went and washed his eyes in the pool of Siloam, guess what happened? He could see. And then people started investigating his life. And, and you notice that verse number eight says the neighbors and those who had previously seen that he was blind, they said, is not this the guy who sat begging? Because that's the only way he had to, to make any money to live on, is to just sit by the gate and, and shake his cup and beg. And they say, it, it, that, that looks like him. Verse 9 said, some said, uh, that's him. Others said, no, it just looks like him. It's not him. See, they can't explain it. See, the world just gets in a, it gets in a real tizzy when it can't explain God. But you know, I'm looking for something that can't be explained except by God. Amen? But, but see, they just, they just get in a big tizzy. And so no, notice what happens here. Uh, down, in, down in verse number 13, they brought him to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees in verse 13 and following, they start asking him, well, how would you get your eyes open? And he, he tells them. He tells them what Jesus did. He tells them that he did what Jesus said do and, and that he could see. And then they ask him, well, who do you think he was? Down in verse number 17, he, he said, he, he's a prophet. Verse 18 says, But the Jews, they didn't believe concerning him that he had been blind and had received his sight. So you know what? They, they called mom and daddy in. <laughs> this is really a hilarious story to me. They called mom and daddy in. Is that your boy? Well, yeah, that's him. And then they're, at, they're quizzing them. Well, how did he get his sight back? I, I, I love this story. You notice that verse 21 says, But by what means he now sees, we don't know. Or who opened his eyes? We don't know. And I love, said he's of age. In other words, he's big enough to tell you what happened to him. Ask him. You know, the Bible is full of humor if you just look at it that way. And, and that, that just always, so the parents are called in. And then finally, 
to, to hurry this up, finally the, the, the Pharisees wind up, they wind up going back to the guy. And, and I love his, his answer in verse 25. He answered and said, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know, though I was blind, now I see. And, and then they want him to tell him, tell him again how he got his sight back. And, and he told them, well, I, I've already told you. You want me to tell you again? And then he really preaches them a sermon and, and they get upset because, you know, they're supposed to be the Pharisees. You know, we'd be talking about the elite in the church today. That's what we'd be talking about now. And, and, and God doing something spectacular and miraculous and we start questioning it to death. And, and uh, notice what verse 34 says. Here's where we want to get to. Verse 34 said, They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins and are you teaching us? In other words, are you, you telling us something about him? And then those, they cast him out. They, they threw him out of church. That's, that amounts to that. They said you can't come back in here anymore. And, and then look at verse 30. I, 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 love, I love verse 35 and following. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? He answered, see he'd already given him physical sight. Guess what? He's fixing to give him something better than physical sight. He's fixing to give him spiritual sight. And, and in verse uh, 35, latter part of the verse, he said, to, do, do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, who is the Lord that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have both seen him and it is he who is talking to you. You know what he said? Lord, I believe. And he fell down and he worshiped him. And he received spiritual sight. On the heels of all of this, the reason I took the time to do it, on the heels of all of that story, then Jesus, chapter 10, jumps in and says, I am the door of the sheepfold. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved. Everybody, Jesus said, enters any other way is a thief and a robber. Now, that's what always upset the Pharisees. Jesus just called it like he saw it. You say, was well, he calling them thieves and robbers? I believe he exactly called them thieves and robbers. That's what I believe he was doing. You can't enter in any other way. You can't be saved any other way other than by Jesus Christ. He is the door. And if you, if you will enter, you will be saved. Now, you know, I, li I like if anyone. In, it, it, don't you like that word? I like if anyone. I'm, aren't you glad he didn't say a person's name? Anyone, if anyone, that just simply means anyone will enter by me, he will be saved. So, so the first thing that we learn about Jesus being the door is that through this door we have salvation. But now, now follow me here. Number two, Jesus said, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And what? He will go in and out. Here's a second idea. Through this door, we not only have salvation, through this door, we have security. We have security. We can go in and we can go out. Now, Jesus mentioned the sheepfold. A sheepfold in Bible days was, was maybe a little different than what you might be thinking. In Bible days out there in the wilderness, a shepherd would find a, just a hewed out place, maybe in the side of a, of a, of a, of a mountain somewhere. He'd find, he, he would find a hewed out place. It, it might not have gone very deep, but it would be back up under the earth. And, and a lot of times what he would do is he would take rocks, stones, and he would, he would build up a little, a little light fence, and, and he might put sticks and thorns and all kinds of things on the top of those stones. But all the way around, he would leave an an entrance way. There were no hinges on the door. There was really no door. Because whenever the shepherd would get the sheep inside that sheep fold, the shepherd then would lie down across that pathway. He would prop up in that pathway. And that's how he slept during the night. And the sheep on the inside would sleep in peace and security because they knew that the shepherd was right. That's the picture that Jesus is painting here. That's the picture that Jesus wants you to get in your mind. I am the door. No way in except me. But once in, once you become a part of his fold, there is not only salvation, but there is also security. 
you'll be able to go in, but you'll also be able to go out. You see, you, you, you can go in at the end of the day with the shepherd where there is peace, where there is security, where there is protection. But look, the next morning, that shepherd's going to take his sheep. He's going to lead them out and he is going to lead them into the green pastures of the hillsides that he's already found for them. He already knows where it is. He's going to lead them out there, and then they have the liberty. It's a beautiful picture here. They have the liberty, the sheep do, to graze out there in those open pastures that the shepherd has found for them. At end of day, they'll be gathered up, carried back into the sheepfold. It's in and it's out with the security of the shepherd. Have you ever heard somebody say, Oh, well, I arrive safe and what? Sound. I'm safe and sound. I made the trip. Well, could I add, could I, could I rework that phrase? You know what I am this morning? I'm saved and sound. That's what I am. I'm saved and sound. There is tremendous security in your relationship if you have walked through the door. You have a shepherd. Listen, folks, you are not alone and you are not on your own. Not with Jesus. You're not. You've got a shepherd. In fact, look at John 10. And I want you to look at verse 27 through 30. John 10, 27 through 30. Notice what Jesus said. The same context. He said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give them what? I give them eternal life. Do you have security today? Do you have eternal life? I have somebody, well, preacher, I used to have eternal life, but I don't have it anymore. I said, well, if you used to have eternal life, and you lost it, then what you had wasn't eternal. Because eternal means what? It's forever. It doesn't end. Jesus, did, he didn't say I give temporary life. He didn't like insurance folks. No, no, I might have some in here. No pun on insurance people now. <laughs> but here's the deal. What Jesus gives is eternal life. And then notice. Verse 28, I give them eternal life, and they'll what? They'll never perish. Watch this now. This is good stuff. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of, need to circle this, my hand. Whose hand? Jesus. Watch verse 29. Ought to circle these next two words. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of what? My Father's hand. Ought to circle those. Then notice verse 30. I and my Father are what? We're one. Man, that's tremendous security. I'm going to run out of time for a run. For a run and I'm, and I'm, Emmy, would you come in and help me just a minute? I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you something to make Baptist shout, all right? I'm going to give her something to make her shout, all right? I'm going to give her a dollar, all right? Here's what I want her to do. Emmy is going to represent Jesus for us this morning, okay? So when you see her right now, she represents Jesus, all right? This dollar that I'm going to put in her hand represents a soul saved. Salvation. Somebody saved. And I want you to close your hand up real tight. Alright? So there, here's salvation. And Emmy represents Jesus. Where's, where's a person saved? It's in the hand of Jesus. But guess what else? You know who has, who's wrapped around, Jesus said, he, the Father and I are what? We're one. So that's the reason I wanted to use Emmy. I knew the hands would work. So you see, you see this right here? A person saved is in the hand of Jesus, in the hand of God. Hey, you got a double grip for security. And my verse says, nobody's going to what? Snatch them out. That ought to make you want to jump and shout. Thank you so much. Give her a hand. Would you do that? That's That's security. I have security. You have security. If you've walked through the door, you not only have salvation, you have security. Now I've got to hurry. Number three. Through this door we have salvation. Through this door we have security. Through this door we have satisfaction. Notice what he says. If anyone enters by me, 
He will be saved and he'll go in and out and what? Find pasture. Satisfaction. Contentment. You know what the job of the shepherd was? The job of the shepherd was to find the green pastures. In fact, if you go to Palestine in that area today, you'll find it's a very barren land. It's not, a very, it's not green like ours. don't have a lot of trees like we have. It's very barren. It's very open. It's rocky. And there are not a lot of green pastures. But the shepherd would always know where they were. And he would always lead his sheep to the green pastures. He would always lead his sheep to find the still pools. Not the stagnant, polluted ones, but the still, clean pools of water to drink. You know, I thought about it. In fact, Peg and I were talking about it coming down this morning. I said, you know, a sheep really is easy to satisfy. Now, I don't know about us sheep, but I know about the, the, the physical sheep. All, all, all he needs for contentment, or all she needs for contentment, is just something good to eat and something clean to drink. And you know what? That's what God promised us. I'll provide for you the necessities, the needs of your life. Shelter, food. God will provide that. Talked about it in the Sermon on the Mount. But the shepherd always would lead his sheep to the green pastures and the clean waters. And here's a phrase that God put on my heart and I'm going to give you some examples. Whenever you walk through the right door, in other words, whenever you find the right door and you walk through that door, you won't ever want to walk through another door. Now I want you to just think with me. Whenever you, I'm, I'm saying when you, when you find that right door and then you walk through that door, you won't ever want to walk through another door. I remember when I walked through it was on uh, this side, I believe. When I walked through that door, not this one, but when I walked through that door from this side in Hopewell Baptist Church, Covington County, and walked around up here and stood on the stage. You was there. Because he's standing up on the stage too. Paul Paul was there because he was performing the ceremony. And I waited until some other doors opened up in the back. And the most beautiful, red-headed, she's not red-headed today, but I don't know, she's kind of a natural thing God has done with her. But the most beautiful red-headed girl I ever saw in my life came down the aisle. And I knew that day that I had married the love of my life and that there'd never be another. I walked through that door. It was the right door. And don't have to go through another door. I remember when I, on a Sunday morning, walked through the door at Long Branch Baptist Church over there in the middle of nowhere at Cohasset and walked down the aisle of that church to go to the pulpit. I knew that day what my calling was and that I would never, ever want to do anything else in my life. When I walked through in February 2016, those doors back there, I knew in my heart that God wanted and would do something in this fellowship that would be special and could be only explained by God. He isn't finished with that project. He isn't finished with that project. And he has a vision for this fellowship. And as time and comes, I believe God will lay that vision before us and, and I believe it will amaze even us what God will do right here in the confines of this building. As a 10-year-old boy, when I walked down the aisle of that church and gave my heart to Jesus Christ, I knew that He was my Lord and Savior and that there was no one else that I would love, worship, serve, and obey but him. When you find the right door and you walk through that door, you don't care about walking through another door. Jesus is the door. And you know, 
doors are, you know, they, they kind of like separate also. They separate. Because when you come up to a door, you're either on the outside wanting in or you're on the inside wanting out. So they, they kind of almost separate. What I would say as I close today is this. If you, if you are on the outside looking in, then my challenge to you is this. Open the door called Jesus. There are no there are no hinges on that door. There are, no, there are no knobs. There are no locks. In fact, the door is open. Jesus said, I am the door. Just like the sheepfold, the door is open. All you've got to do is come to Jesus. And if you haven't come to Jesus, then my challenge to you, come to Jesus today. You're on the outside looking in, come inside. You'll find salvation. You'll find security. You'll find peace. And you'll find satisfaction. If you're on the inside looking out, and maybe all in this room are, but if you're on the inside looking out, here's the challenge I believe God has for us. We need to do everything we can to invite all we can, and as many as we can, that are on the outside to make the choice we made of choosing Jesus, the door. Because through this door, you find salvation. You find security and you find satisfaction. Let's bow together as we pray. Father, I do thank you so much for this day, for the opportunity that you've given us to be in this service, to study this passage of Scripture. And Lord, I praise you today that you are the door, that you are the way to salvation, to security and dissatisfaction. And Lord, I pray this morning that if there are those here today who are on the outside looking in, that Lord, today this message has helped them realize that you are the way to salvation for them. If there are those here today, Lord, I pray who are struggling with their relationship with you, I pray today that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will touch them in such a special way that they'll realize that their relationship with you is what brings security and peace and contentment, that they have that in you. Lord, I pray today for those who are on the outside who need to come in. I pray today, Lord, for those who are on the inside who know what it is to have a special relationship with you, who know what it is to feel your love and your security being in the double grip of the Son and the Father. Lord, I pray that you will challenge our hearts today to be broken over people who are lost, to be praying for people who are lost, and to be inviting and encouraging those who are outside to choose the right door. Because Lord, when we, when we see that right door, when we choose that right door, that's the door that brings salvation, security, and satisfaction. Lord Jesus, speak to our hearts now. Challenge us and encourage us. In Jesus' name, amen.